Hey everyone, Jason Shepard here of M0A.com and I love this video from our brand new private pilot online ground school which the entire team here at M0A.com works so hard to help come to fruition. And honestly, if you love this video, you're going to love the entire online ground school. There is a link for a free trial in the video description for this video. So you can hop on some webinars, see all the videos, private, instrument, commercial, FOI, and take a look at everything mzoray.com has to offer for two weeks, totally free. This video is just flying a normal traffic pattern. While it sounds so basic, we take you through every nuance of the traffic pattern. It's one of my favorite videos because we do it in the airplane that started it all for M0A.com. That is 512 Romeo, an airplane, my very first airplane I bought, sold the airplane and ended up buying it back many years later. So a lot of history for me in this video, but uh, we'll start on the ground teaching the studio and then we'll take you up in 512 Romeo as we teach in our private pilot online ground school the normal traffic pattern. In this video we're going to learn how to fly the traffic pattern. The traffic pattern is a rectangular course around the airport and we fly the airport traffic pattern or at least part of it to leave the airport as well and to get back into the airport. Most airport traffic patterns are an altitude of 1,000 feet above the field elevation of the airport. Now, if your airport is at 500 feet mean sea level, that's its elevation, also known as MSL, the airport traffic pattern will be 1,500 feet MSL. Most airport traffic patterns are left traffic, but there are a few exceptions where we make right traffic, meaning left or right hand turns in this rectangular course. Look at this sectional chart with me here. When we see the name of the airport with the designation RP next to it, it tells us the airport has a right pattern. This is the Seattle sectional chart. We can see the letters RP beneath the name of the Auburn Airport. That means the traffic for runway 16 at Auburn makes all turns to the right. Now there's many reasons for an airport to have right traffic. The most common reason is that there's an obstruction or maybe there's a noise sensitive area on the opposite side of the airport such as a hospital, a residential neighborhood, a bird sanctuary. No matter which way we make the turns though, we need to know that all turns are 90 degrees from each other in heading, not in bank angle please, in heading making those 90 degree turns. So if we take off from runway 17 with left traffic, your next turn will be to a heading of 080, which is 90 degrees off the left of 17, runway 17. The first turn is called the crosswind turn, and it happens when we're about 700 feet above ground level. Now, while turning, you continue to climb to pattern altitude, and you make your turn to downwind next. Pattern altitude is usually 1,000 feet above field elevation, so again, the field's 500 feet, our pattern will be 1,500 feet MSL. The downwind leg is parallel and 180 degrees opposite of our upwind leg, that departure leg, the leg we took off on, right? While downwind, the lateral sight picture will be about halfway up the strut of a 172. The heading you should fly should be 180 degrees off the runway heading. So if you took off from runway 17, what heading would you fly? We'd be flying a heading of 350, 350, because it'd be the reciprocal, 180 degree opposite. Now you want to be about a half mile to three quarters of a mile laterally from the runway. There's a tendency, by the way, to fixate on the runway. You keep looking to the left, and when you do this, your tendency is actually to drift towards what you're looking at, to drift into that runway. So find something off your nose in the distance where you can put the nose of the airplane on and track towards that to make sure we maintain the same distance from the runway. So unless you're flying off an aircraft carrier, the runway is not going to be trying to get away from you, right? It's still over there. You don't have to keep staring at it. Now, while on downwind, it's a good idea to go through our pre-landing checklist and flow if you haven't already. There's a very popular acronym for uh, kind of going through this checklist, and sometimes called the GUMPS check, G-U-M-P-S. It stands for gas, undercarriage, mixture, primer, propeller, pump, fuel pump, and safety items such as seat belts, another S. 
gas, make sure the fuel is on and on or on to the correct engine. If you're flying a low wing aircraft, fuel selector on the fullest tank. Undercarriage, that's our landing gear. Well, it should be in the down locked and welded position in our Cessna 172, right? But if you're flying a retractable gear airplane, we have to think of that as well as a possibility here. And that's where you look out, make sure you see each tire if you're in a high wing aircraft and you can see that. So we always want to double check that. Next, the M. Mixture should be all the way rich, or if you, if you need to have it lean for any reason, it should be set where it needs to be for best power, but typically it's going to be full rich in this scenario. The P, primer, in and locked. It may mean fuel pump, another P, on. Propeller, if we have an adjustable constant speed variable pitch propeller, propeller full forward as well. And the S is our safety items. Typically, it ends with us with our seat belts, but safety items could also be, are my lights on, right? Other things that pertain to safety, particularly to your aircraft. Ideally, you'll do this gump check three times on downwind, on base, and final, just double checking everything. Now to the task of slowing down the airplane. We're probably showing an indicated air speed of anywhere from 90 to 100 knots on downwind. And again, it just depends what aircraft you're flying. These aren't hard set numbers. It's the numbers that need to work for your airplane, your instructor will tell you that. Now, when we are across what's called our abeam point, meaning when we're abeam our touchdown point, when I look to my left and left traffic, and that is perfectly perpendicular to me, my abeam point there, I want to go ahead and reduce my power back. I always teach in my aircraft, because it's carbureted, carb heat, power back, 10 degrees of flaps. When I say power back, it's roughly 15, 16, 1700 RPMs is where I bring that power back to. The airplane will start descending. Don't let the nose drop because that's actually going to increase your airspeed. Just taking the thrust away will start our descent here. Now we want to make sure we're within the white arc before we deploy those flaps as well. And that's why it's important to know our aircraft's V speeds and when we can actually lower the flaps in the aircraft here. So we're going to actually turn our base leg when the runway is 45 degrees off our shoulder. So if I started perpendicular to my beam point, and then when that travels 45 degrees back over my shoulder is about when I want to make my base turn. Now I've descended, by the way, I should be about 200 feet less than traffic pattern altitude while I get to this 45 degree point, and then I turn base. Now, as we turn base, I don't want to add flaps in a turn. I need to add more flaps on base, assuming on conditions, but I teach to never add flaps in a turn. And, and here's why. Simply, I'm turning, right? I'm turning in the aircraft, and I'm, I'm slow, I'm low, and when I add flaps, where does the nose want to come, right? The nose tends to want to come up a little bit. I'm low, I'm slow, one wing's producing more lift than the other in a turn, and I, the nose has kind of a tendency to come up when I add flaps. It has all the ingredients for a stall spin scenario now, doesn't it? Not something I want to find myself in. So I add flaps on base once my wings are level. Now, when the runway threshold is ahead of us, we're on base now, you can picture that. We're on base now. When the runway threshold is about a 45 degree angle from us, we turn final. And we do this using a standard rate turn. We can add once wings level, add flaps as necessary, and fly in the VASI or the PAPI if available. Remember, red over red, too low. Bump your head, right? Red over red, bump your head. A lot of instructors use a more forceful mnemonic that says red over red, you're dead. It's kind of grim, but it certainly gets your attention, right? It's a way to remember that. So now if we look at the lights, we see white over white, I'm out of sight. I'm too high. If you're too low, add power. If you're too high, reduce power and perhaps add more flaps if that's an option. Now what about radio calls? If you're at a towered airport, you'll ask the tower for permission to land. At a non-towered airport, you'll self-announce each turn in the traffic pattern. So turning crosswind, turning downwind, turning base, turning final. But don't drop the airplane, right, to fly the radio. Continue to fly the airplane. You'll notice early on your instructor is going to help you with radio work because it's so overwhelming to multitask. And eventually they'll give you some of that, that you know, work to do in the airplane as you add radio calls in there. Back to landings though. 
Every landing you need to understand is different. And I say this because as an instructor, you fly with some pilots who have pattern procedures memorized. When they turn final, they automatically drop the flaps. But what if the airplane's too low, right? You're seeing four red lights. Dropping more flaps would be foolish. So we don't do it. Some people get in these habits here. You need to be careful of that and realize that every landing is different. Different runways, different wind, different weight. It's always changing. But if we can keep it as standard as possible, that's one of the first secrets to a perfect landing. It starts with a perfect traffic pattern. So now we've heard how to fly the pattern. Let's head out to the airport and fly the traffic pattern so you can see what it looks like. Hey, ground school members, Jason back with you in 512 Romeo. I just had a 172 do a nice little touch and go ahead of me. I'm holding short runway five at Williston. And I'm going to take you for a lap in the traffic pattern to teach you the traffic pattern. Make sure my seatbelt's good, shoulder harness set, everything's good, run-up is already complete, everything's good there. We're all set. I'm going to do one final peek. I already made my spin around to see. And Williston traffic, Cessna 512 Romeo is departing runway 5, closed traffic, Williston. Made my radio call. All is good, double checking final, and we're just simply gonna go over the legs of the traffic pattern. I'm watching to make sure I'm totally clear. That aircraft is faster than me, and he's also clear. Using all my available runway here. Everything is set, set. Looking outside, confirm five, runway five, and five on my magnetic compass, and let's roll. The moment we lift off, we're on what leg of our traffic pattern? The moment we lift off, we're on the upwind leg of our traffic pattern. Airspeed's alive. Engine Western gauge is all green. One two one two uniform is left crosswind, runway five, Williston. And he's a little bit ahead of us. He's turning our next leg, as you heard, which is left crosswind. We are up. Everything is looking good. Engine gauge is all still great. Airplanes flying great. This is the airplane that started it all for M0A.com about. Over a decade ago, most certainly. Love this little airplane here. Flew it from Daytona Beach, Florida, to Catalina Island, California, and back. It was well, the traffic a trip. 50, departing runway 5 with the south departure. Well, so I've got one on the left cross, and visualize this with me. I've got another Cessna 150 behind me who's departing. He's going to be out to the traffic. south. Okay, uh, one, two, one, two, uniform, left downwind, runway 5, Willis. He's well ahead of me because he's turning left down. I passed through 500 feet. My traffic pattern altitude here is 1,000 feet. AGL and MSL are almost the same when you're here in Florida. So when I get 300 feet from traffic pattern altitude, so 700 feet, I turn the next leg of my traffic pattern, which is my left crosswind. And that I look first, I raise in the wing, look, and we turn. Williston traffic, Cessna 512 Romeos, turning left crosswind, runway 5, Williston. Always starting and ending the radio call. I know we're teaching radio communications now, getting ahead of ourselves, but always starting and ending that radio call with where we're at. 19860 Hotel, 9 mile final, runway 5, Williston traffic. Now this brings up a really great scenario. Here is somebody who's not breaking the rules. Just call up a 9 mile final for runway 5. I'm at 1,000 feet. I'll bring my power back a little bit, and I'm going to turn my next leg, which is my left downwind. We'll discuss that nine mile in a second. Williston traffic, Cessna 512 Romeo is turning left downwind, runway 5, Williston. And I'm just going to parallel traffic sky my up, runway now. Uniform is on left base, runway 5, he's Williston, touch and go. So he's a touch and go, and he's well ahead of me. He's already in the base. I'm just now turning my downwind. He's much, much faster than I am. My heading should be about a 230, but given the wind, it may uh, need to change and adjust for there. I'm a much, much slower aircraft. That's a 172 out in front of me there. I'm tripping up. Don't want your airspeed to get away from me on this point. And now let's talk about the problem we were presented with here. The one in front of me, the 172, I'm not worried about. He's on base, he's final, he's a touch and go. We are nicely spaced in the traffic pattern. We could be in the traffic pattern all day together, no issues. The other 150, I see him, despite him only making one radio call, he was taking off. He's now making a right crosswind departure. Not illegal, but not correct. I have an Aztec, a multi-engine aircraft. Traffic Skyhawk 1212 uniform is on final. Runway 5 will be departing to the southeast. 
Posted. So he's a touch and go. He's going to depart out to the southeast, out to probably make another right cross from departure here. I'm concerned about this Aztec who called up nine miles and hasn't really said a word here. So I'm watching for him. I could even call him out and ask how far out. Well, it's the traffic. Arrow, one arrow. Eight, six hotel, six mile final, runway five. Well, it's the traffic. I'm a beam at my touchdown point. I've got him six miles out. It's. I'm going to go ahead and make my traffic pattern here because I can keep it in. He's, if he's still six miles out, I think we're going to be A-OK. -okay. Car repeat, power back, 10 degrees of flaps. And we're just going to fly our normal traffic pattern. He was nine miles out when I was on the crosswind. Now he's only six miles out. I'm just doing the math in my head. We're going to be A-OK -okay pulling on in like this. I'm going to turn my base when I get a 45 degree point off my touchdown point, which I am. Williston traffic, Cessna 512 Romeo is turning left base, runway 5, Williston. My other option there is to either extend, and I could have extended, you know, I'd, if he's flying in, I'd have to fly out the traffic. traffic. Skyhawk, one to one uniform, departing runway 5, making a right turn to southeast, Williston. All right, he's going to make a right turn out. Arrow 1986 Hotel, 4 mile final, runway 5, Williston traffic. I'll make another radio call just to remind him. And Williston traffic, Cessna 512 Romeo is a left base for 5, uh, be a full stop, Williston. I'm watching for him. He magically all of a sudden got a whole lot faster. I'm watching for him, but I'm still focused. I have the right to the runway. I'm the lower aircraft. I'm heading that way. I'm the closer aircraft. It is my runway. But just because I have the right of way doesn't always mean they're, you know, they can't cut you off or anything like that. It's like driving a car, right? This is a perfect scenario, huh? Everything's good. Four lane checklist. Everything's set, set, set. Again, staying focused on us here. Let's go ahead and let's turn our last leg, which is called Final. And Williston traffic, Cessna 512 Romeo is turning Final, runway 5, full stop, Williston. We're going to go ahead and turn Final here. Wind's really blowing now, feel it blowing us kind of on through. We have the runway, we're looking great. And airspeed is perfect, right at 70, right where I want to be. Slightly above my glide path, I couldn't think of a better place to be honest. I'd rather be a little too high than a little too low. We're going to listen for that arrow, and I am going to be courteous and do my. Wilson traffic, arrow 1986 Hotel, two and a half mile final runway five, Wilson traffic. Still two and a half miles out, not that much of an issue, but I'm still going to be courteous. I'm not going to race off the runway, but I'm not going to drag anything out either by any means on purpose. We're coming on in, and a nice, easy, oh, there's a little gust, and put her down real nice. And here comes the nose. And again, it stops quite easily here. Get off in plenty of time. And then one thing I'm going to do is I'm going to announce for him, for his sake, that I am clear, just so he knows. Wilson the traffic, arrow 1986 hotel, one mile final, runway five, Wilson the traffic. Once I get officially clear and pass the whole short line, I will say that I still don't see him out there, but he says he's out there. And once we get past the whole short line, we'll make that radio call. And Williston traffic, Cessna 512 Romeo is clear, runway 5, Williston. Just let him know I'm clear. What a perfect scenario, huh? A busy day in the, the traffic pattern to show that and show that decision making. Say, listen, I'm ready to turn base. He's on a six mile final. Yeah, he's an arrow. He's a little bit faster. But as Wilson we saw. Traffic. Arrow 1986 Hotel going missed runway five. Wilson traffic. Now he's going. Oh, I do see him finally. He's going missed. He was probably shooting an instrument approach. It would been nice if he said that. But again, we saw a lot of things. We saw right, two right hand departures. Not illegal, but not proper either. We learn more about this throughout this course, and it's so cool to show you what happens in the book and what happens in the real world sometimes. So listen, guys, hope you enjoyed that. I'll see you in the upcoming lessons. See ya.